everyone! We're doing a Kickstarter right now for The Magpie, which is a comic about a lesbian love triangle with an elder god, so if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, it ends on Monday, June 11th, so go check it out before then if you would like to pledge and get a copy of the book. That's it, thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, go check it out. Time is running out. Thank you so much if you have supported or shared. That is amazing. Um, but yeah, on to the video. So today I am continuing to work on Sir Feathercatcher. Um, he is a character from Scourge of Nine Point and uh, my, another one of my comics. Um, and he is like a mentor knight type guy to one of the main characters, Mitzi. Um, he, yeah, so he's, he's a little bit older than the mains, like at this point in the story, all the main characters are, are young, so like Mitzi herself is like, I think she's 15, 14, 15, around there, um, and she's becoming a squire, and eventually, um, she wants to work to become a knight. And so in order to be a squire, she needs a mentor. So she goes to Sir Feathercatcher and she's going to work for him. Um, but yeah, so he's older. He's like a very experienced knight. He's seen some battles. So last time I did some really like quick initial designs to just really start fleshing out how I picture him, which is really tough. Like I find that's one of the like hardest parts early on in design is when you're just like sketching out random ideas to see what works and most of the time they don't work. <laughs> um, so it's a lot of just like exploration and figuring out stuff. Um, so today I have a bit better of an idea where I want his design to go. Um, so I thought it would be good to do like a lineup of characters to kind of like contrast him with other characters he'll interact with. Um, so that includes Mitzi, um, obviously, because she'll be trying to work for him, and um, it also includes some of the servants that live in his manor, so that's Mr. and Mrs. Buttons, um, who are kind of like maid and butler type people. <laughs> Cats, I mean. Um, and I also drew Pepper, who actually doesn't meet Feathercatcher as far as I know, but he's one of Mitzi's friends. Um, he's a little a little page knight guy. Um, he's sweet. Um, so yeah, so throughout the video that's who I'll be drawing. I start with doing like a lineup of all the characters and then and then hopefully next week um, I will be able to start like fleshing these out a little bit more. Though honestly with all the characters that I'm trying to design for Nine Point, I might I might be doing lots of like really quick initial designs of all the characters so that eventually I can hopefully like line them all up and start to work them like all in a lineup together. Like this is how I think I'm gonna do it is like yeah get all the characters like the basics of them sketched out then show them all together so that I can refine them all together so that I don't say like because it, it could happen where I make a character design that like looks really good and works really well on its own but as soon as I put it beside like all the other cast members of the comic um it's like oh he looks exactly like this other character or um oh the design doesn't really fit the style of the comic oops <laughs> like um so I want to I want to get away from that super early. So I'm hoping that having like the basic idea of everyone sketched out will help with that, especially with like secondary characters and side characters where I'm not paying so much attention to like how they look um, in relativity to like all the other secondary characters. So I don't want like repeats by accident and I don't want really bland characters or characters that stand out way too much compared to the main characters. Um... Because I want my main characters to be, like, the flashiest, I guess. Even though they're not, like, super flashy. But, you know, I want them to, to look good. <laughs> like, I want the mains to have the most appeal. Um, I hope. <laughs> and honestly, there's so many characters in Nine Point. Like, it's a big epic fantasy story. So there's, like, there's already, like, three mains. 
No, way more than that. There's so many main characters that get, like, viewpoints, and there's a bunch of different villains and a whole bunch of different, like, locations that things are going to happen in. So I'm like, oh gosh, I better avoid overlap as much as I can. <laughs> um... But yeah, um, it's been really helping doing lineups of characters. I find that it's it really does help to see them all lined up together um, and see like, okay, so this one is like, this character is based off like triangle shapes and this one is based off of circles. And then if you put them together, it's like, okay, they do look different or like, oh, I need to push this one more. Um, and I find designs tend to, like, feed off of each other. Um, at least I found that when I was dying. I at least found that when I was designing the prologue of Nine Point, um, a lot of the character designs were kind of, like, built off each other, which makes sense, because if you have, say, characters who, like, grew up in the same place or, like, um, are from the same area or something, it's like, yeah, of course, you know, the king and queen are going to wear similar colors and similar, like, symbols and stuff, because they're you know, they're, they're married and they rule a kingdom, so they need, like, their kingdom symbols and stuff. Um, in that case, you know, a married couple tends to, like, look like each other, so yeah, I built that up as much as I could. Um, so yeah, it's very good to have just characters to compare with each other, especially when they're in the same scene or when they're from, you know, a similar setting in the story. Yeah, it's just, it's been helpful, definitely. Um... And these sketches that I'm doing, they're not, like I said, they're not the final version of these designs. I'm not going super deep into all of them. I'm just grabbing, like, here's a shape, here's an idea. I will just go with it and see where it goes. Um, like, all the characters I'm drawing today, I haven't really drawn before, with the exception of Mitzi, but I've drawn her at a younger age in the past. So I think in the prologue, she's, like, seven or eight. Um, and so I have to draw her aged up. And honestly, the one I drew today, I'm not super keen on. She looks kind of bland. <laughs> um, and I really need to push her design more and make her look a bit older and a bit feistier. Um, cause she's like, she's full of energy and, and she's a go-getter. So like, I really want that to show, um, in her design. And right now she looks like, I don't know, main character girl. <laughs> um, so I do like how Feathercatcher's turning out. He's getting kind of like, He's looking a little villainous, because he, he's a mentor, but he's also acts a little bit as an antagonist for Mitzi. Because, like, yeah. <laughs> he, he definitely pushes her and challenges her, so I want him to look, like, you know, old and wise and cunning. Because he's, like, he's a smart guy, and he's, like, he plays it cool. So, yeah, I want that to come across in his design. Admittedly, what I've drawn here, his head is, like, way too big. <laughs> and his legs are tiny, so I need to fix that. Um, and in the lineup, I don't have everyone at the correct scale. Like, um, that's, that's a tip I'll give you. Don't start drawing the head first. <laughs> don't be Ursula draws the head first gray. Because when I do that, I don't get the right height for the characters. Because if I draw the head too small, then they're too short. Um, so, yeah. Start with gesturing in the body and then start drawing the head, and then your characters will all be the same height. Or, well, you can fit them on the scale better. You don't want them all to be the same height. Especially, like, Mitzi and Feathercatcher, where she's, like, a young teen, and he's, like, a grown-up. And he's tall, <laughs> so he will be taller than her. Um, so yeah, and then you can make sure that they're all, like, proportioned correctly, and, you know, you're not drawing someone at, like, a regular size, but just shrunk down. Like, you want someone to have the proportions of someone who's, like, shorter or have the proportion of someone who's taller. You don't want to just, like, scale it up and down. I don't know. <laughs> I guess what I mean is, like, you gotta push proportions, too, right? <sighs> the problem with character design is there's so much stuff to consider, and, like, it can re really get overwhelming, and I'm, I'm worried going into this, this idea of, like, drawing all the characters really roughly before I start refining is, like, it's spooky. <laughs> it's, like, this could get overwhelming really, really quick. Um, 
And yeah, and it probably will, and I'm already a little overwhelmed because I've got this huge list of characters I need to draw. And I'm like, oh gosh, um, I have vague ideas of who these characters all look like when I was reading the scripts. But now I don't know, because whenever I draw someone, they look exactly like a character I've drawn previously. <laughs> so again, having them all laid out, I hope I can avoid that. Um... Because when I was drawing, like, Pepper here, I was like, oh, he looks like one of the other pages that appeared in the, um, the nine-point prologue. Um, and I can't have that because he's supposed to be younger than Mitzi. He wasn't in her class. So I have to make him look different. Ugh, so hard. <sighs> but it's also really fun. I always gotta remind myself of that. I'm like, right, I'm having fun. Um, because it is cool. I do like designing characters and, like, especially designing new characters because I like the novelty of it. Um, you know, I like, I like starting new things. It's always fun. Um, it's, I think what gets in my way is I get stressed out about it being good and cohesive, like, way too early. Whereas, like, that's something I should really be focusing on later when I'm not just doing kind of the, like, the idea stage. Um, because right now it's just stressing me out and I don't need to do it. It's more like, what I should be doing is just taking the character's description and their personality and, you know, all their dialogue in the script and say, how do I distill this character's personality down? Because, like, you can always add things and take away things, but if you just put down nothing, you've got nothing. Does that make sense? Um, basically I shouldn't worry about it being perfect until I'm doing the refinement stuff. And you shouldn't either if you're doing character designs. Um, because I'm definitely going to do multiple passes on these characters. Um, like even the designs that I'm more happy with. Um, so like, you know, Feathercatcher, I'm really happy with where his design is going, but it's not perfect at all. <laughs> it needs a lot more refinement. It's probably going to change a lot, but I like the feel I'm getting from it. And that's, I think that's where I want to get with these designs is I want the feel to be right. And then I'll go into like the details and making sure the shapes are perfect. And I'm also going to focus on the wardrobe a lot later on, <laughs> which is a really important part of character design because like how a character dresses says so much about them. Um, but right now I'm just focusing on like major shapes rather than little details like, you know, what they're wearing. Um, it'll also be fun because a lot of these characters have like multiple outfits. So I'm excited to like have them give them outfits that all match their style. Um, and, you know, are functional and look good with all the other characters. Oh, there's so much, like, comparison and thinking about that. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to get into the clothes more as well. Because um, I like, I like researching fashion and, like, and, and then by that I mean, like, historical fashion and, like, uh, armor and stuff. Like, it's really cool. <laughs> Um, so I'm very excited to, like, look into it and inform the style of the Nine Point world more. Um, because it is an interesting, like, it's, it's a fantasy world. It's an interesting, like, stage in fashion. Because it's, like, it's, a lot of the inspiration for, like, the clothing and the setting is drawn from, like, from medieval times all the way up to, like, some like, 18th century stuff. Probably earlier than 18th century. I think that's pushing it a little bit. But yeah, because I want people to wear, like, you know, cool knight armor and big fancy medieval dresses, but I also want them to be, like, a little bit more modern than that. Modern. <laughs> As if the 18th century is modern. Um... But yeah, but I want it to stand on its own and I want the fashion to, like, make sense within the world. Um, like I, cause in previous comics I've done, like, um, Sovereign, which was a fantasy comic, like, the fashion didn't really make sense. Like, it wasn't informed by, like, other fashion pieces in the story. Like, I didn't have a clear idea of what I wanted everything to look like. It was just kind of, like, things would be serviceable. It's like, okay, you know, this character gets, like, a big coat with the flare and stuff because like um they're cool and adventurous and then this one gets like um like a waistcoat because he's serious like it it was not well thought out 
Um, and, like, there were a bunch of different, like, regions in Sovereign that had very different climates, but I didn't really consider, like, you know, how they would dress depending on the climate and the culture and stuff, because it just wasn't developed um, as much as it should have been. So, yeah, with Nine Point, we've definitely done a lot more development of, like, what the culture is like, what the different, like, cities are like, um, especially with um, the Nine Point Empire, which is all the cats. So we have a pretty clear idea of, like, what they're up to, what they like, um, what they wear. So I'm very excited to start putting the ideas down onto paper. Yeah. And drawing armor is so much fun. <laughs> I used to, like, find it really intimidating as a kid, but now drawing armor is like, yes, <laughs> it's so cool. Um, because I did a bunch of night sketches for our Kickstarter we did last year. Um, for Scourge of Nine Point, the prologue. Uh, we did a printed version of it, and so one of the rewards was drawing people's pets as knights. So I got to draw so much cool armor and just, like, base it around the character's personality. And by character, I mean the per the pets, like, around their personality. Like, that was really fun. So, yes. <laughs> it's the best. Um, I remember talking to some people about, like, where to find inspiration for, like, costume design and character design and like it's tough I mean it depends on what you're trying to do like with nine point what I've done is most of the inspiration really does come from the script because I'm not the one writing it I work with Bones the writer so he has all the ideas he's done all the world building so he just tells me about it and I'm like ooh, I have ideas <laughs> um, and he'll send me references of like I want it to look like this and like we were looking at like war horses and elk and stuff and we're like we must design it like this um so one point of inspiration for me definitely is looking into like researching historical stuff um for this story because like i said like there's medieval inspired clothing and like a lot of the stuff that's going on is very like medieval you know with like knights and war horses and castles it's like okay i will just look into how things looked in real life and it turns out like you know i think i'm familiar with medieval stuff but i'm really not <laughs> the more i research the more it's like okay this is why they had puffy sleeves and this is why they wore this kind of armor and there's just so much to learn about it and the more I learn about it the more inspired I am to like make things true to form you know and if there's something that doesn't work I can always like shape it differently and find other inspiration because like um we're also my or uh nine point is also very inspired by like anime um so we We've also been looking into, like, you know, keeping things, like, functional over form, but not not allowing, um, like, it's still fantasy and we still want it to, like, look cool. So it doesn't have to be entirely historically accurate. And, you know, it's a mishmash of different historical periods anyways. Um, so yeah, so it's still okay to, like, for me to, like, still make things cool and like a little bit over the top for that like anime inspiration style thing um it just has to have a reason behind everything and yeah so like it's funny we've been looking at um Gurren Lagann for inspiration for character design and it's a very different setting than Nine Point because that one's you know like sci-fi and post-apocalypse and super anime and cute and Nine Point is like medieval wildlife furry stuff um but the designs in Gurren Lagann are like top-notch <laughs> like just the cohesion between like the main three like um uh Simone, Kamina, and Yoko like just between those three, like, their designs are amazing. And, like, as the series goes on, their designs change little by little. But it all is still cohesive and, like, builds off each other. Um, and just, like, oh, the colors are so good. Just, like, the, um, the color cohesion between all the characters. Yes. Um, but I also like that show, f well, you know, when it's a good show. But, like, the, the design in it is very, like... It's very cool, and it does do, like, over-the-top anime things, um, but it's very informed by, like, the character and the story, 
um, which we really want to do with Nine Point. Um, you know, it has, like, a different base to start with, like, genre-wise and, like, content-wise, but it's... We want to give the same feeling and cohesion and fun and brightness to it that, that Gurren Logan has. So it's very... It's kind of like... It's like a compass for me, I guess, where I'm like, it's... I want it to feel like this. <laughs> so, um... It's hard to describe because, like, like I said, they're very different stories um, for many different reasons. But it's like, it's just like, it's a reference, you know? It's like, um, if it stops feeling like this, like emotionally, then we're on the wrong track. <laughs> um, Nine Point's also very inspired by Legend of Zelda, so I look at that a lot for inspiration for different character designs and, like, clothing designs. Um, cause, like, all the different Zelda games are very, like, they're different, but you can tell they're all from the same world. And, like, yeah. And it's, it's, it's another one that's, like, it's very different from the story we're doing, but it's a good reference point to be, like, we want it to feel like this. And a little bit of that is, like, very unquantifiable because it's, like, it's a feeling and we can't really describe what it is, but it's, like, we want to achieve that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that's what I've been looking at for inspiration for Nine Point. Um, it's great when I'm really stuck to just sit down with bones and, like, hash out ideas. We do that a lot. Um... Because sometimes when I'm hitting a wall, Bones will have an idea, so that also, that also helps when I'm, like, uninspired for a design, because he'll be like, oh, well, I pictured, you know, she'd look like this, and um, maybe look at this character and get inspired, or look at this style of clothing and get, in, get, in, get, in, and get inspired. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, defos, defos. And Bones is always great when I need feedback on a design in general, because he's like, do this, don't do that. This is good because <laughs> he he writes the characters. He knows what they're all, what they're all about. So he is always he's another little compass for me. Um. So yeah, that is all I have for today. Um. I didn't think I'd have much to talk about because I feel like I've been talking about character design over and over again for the past like over a month, six weeks. Oh boy. Um. Uh. But yeah. But I. I had fun talking about this stuff, and I hope it was informative. Um, yeah, it's a fun project, Nine Point, so, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I have. Um, thank you so much for listening. If you, um, if you have any questions or if you'd like to request a video topic, please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you want more content about webcomics and making comics. Um, and don't forget to check out the Kickstarter because it ends on Monday. So get in there if you want a copy of the book. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.